Hi, my name is Dr. Stephen Shin. I'm a hand surgeon from Los Angeles, California. And today we'll be introducing the Arthrex Nanoscopic Carpal Tunnel Release System. Here we have the Arthrex Nano Needle that measures 180 millimeters. Below that, we have the Arthrex Center Line. And below that, we have one tool that serves as both a synovial elevator and a dilator. They all come packaged together in one box. So we're gonna give you a few tips now on setting up the nano needle. As you can see here at the top, uh, this is the paddle that's connected by this cord to the nano needle. Uh, the paddle has a couple of buttons right there. And the nano needle itself is 180 millimeters in length and the cap and it's capped right now. You wanna keep the cap on there when you're white balancing your nano needle. So what we're gonna do now, go ahead and grab the paddle, which is also connected on the other side to the monitor. And you can press either button to white balance your nano needle, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Just press one of the buttons and that's gonna go ahead and uh, calibrate or white balance the nano needle. And once you're done with that, you can go ahead and remove the cap from the nano needle, just like that. And now what we're gonna do is insert the nano needle into our center line device. And just a note on the center line device, this is the same center line device that you're used to. However, on the back end, it's slightly modified to have a special adapter that's going to receive your nano needle. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to just insert now the nano needle into the modified center line device and go ahead and push it in. And to help you out, you can also look at your monitor at the same time to help guide your nano needle down the tunnel. So here we go. It's pretty easy. It goes smoothly all the way down right there. And the key part at this point is to make sure that you kind of push and twist to secure the nano needle to the center line device. So here we go. I'm just gonna kind of push there and twist. Now the twisting part is to make sure that the ridges on the nano needle itself are facing up towards you. The reason why it's so important to do that is because that way you can make sure that the blade assembly at the end of your center line device is in the correct position at six o'clock. Now we're ready to demonstrate the nanoscopic carpal tunnel technique. So as I bend the wrist, I'm gonna find a crease a little bit more proximally and maybe there's one kind of right about here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a small incision, okay? Uh, right at that crease and just make my small incision right at that mark, okay? Again, really small. And I'm going to dissect through the tissues. And as you can see, you have the palmaris tendon right here. So we're gonna go like this and kind of get that out of the way with a retractor. Next, I'm going to grab the deeper tissue over here, and I'm gonna dissect through that until I see those nice transverse fibers of the antibrachial fascia. So again, just carefully go like this. If you're in the right area, you're gonna see that your median nerve is right, right there. So we're at the right depth. Next, we're gonna take our tool that comes in the uh, kit. And as I mentioned before, it has a dilator on one end and the synovial elevator on the other end. And you can go either way. You can go the dilator first, or you can go the uh, synovial elevator first. When you're inserting this device, try and stay as ulnar as possible within the carpal tunnel. So let me go ahead and put this underneath that uh, layer right there. I'm gonna go ahead and I can feel that I'm in the carpal tunnel, okay? So right now I'm just making a little uh, space for my instrument. Next, you can flip the tool around and then insert the synovial elevator end of the tool into the carpal tunnel, right into that space. And you wanna go ahead and scrape the undersurface of the transcarpal ligament. I just wanna mention that you wanna to try to hug the hook of the hamate, which is right about here. The more ulnar you stay, the safer you're gonna be when you're cutting the transverse carpal ligament, as we know that the recurrent motor branch is gonna be uh, more on the radial side. So next we're going to insert the center line device into the wrist. And I'm gonna go just like this, and I'm gonna remove my retractor. I'm going to hold the uh, specimen with my uh, left hand, with my thumb on the palm. I'm gonna go distally here, we can see the transverse fibers of the transverse carpal ligament above. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of hug that and go ahead and push in. And I don't see any longitudinal structures, which is nice. Make sure you stay as ulnar as possible within the uh, carpal tunnel. And as you can see, I'm kind of pushing down a little bit on the carpal tunnel and I can kind of feel the distal end of my transverse carpal ligament, okay? So it's gonna be right about there. I'm gonna go ahead and deploy my blade by pressing the button. We're gonna go ahead and make our retrograde incision in the transverse carpal ligament. 
We're cutting right there. I'm just jogging back and forth just a little bit because this is a cadaveric specimen. But you can see here that the blade has cut the undersurface of the transcarpal ligament. And I'm going to go back in and kind of see what I've done. And if I see I haven't gotten the full thickness of it, I'm going to go ahead and repeat that through the same incision. Again, no longitudinal structures. I can feel, you can also hear it too, cutting that thick ligament. And we come all the way down here near the incision. I don't uh, go all the way. I stop right about here because I don't want to tee the skin. You see the fat dropping down. That means you know that you're through the full thickness. And let's just go right through there. So after you've completed your carpal tunnel release, I go ahead and release the proximal fascia. And I'll just lift up the skin here. I'll just spread above and below the fascia. And then as much as I can see, I'm going to go ahead and incise it just with my scissors. And that's it. The reason I like to do this is because we know that the, most of the scarring when you do the surgery is going to be at this incision site. So I like to just uh, open the fascia proximally as well. So a few advantages uh, to the nanoscopic center release system. Uh, it has a zero degree scope and it has a 120 degree field of view, as you can see right here. Uh, probably the, the best thing I like about the system, though, is that there's no heat at all. Therefore, there isn't any fogging. You don't need any FRED, for example. Uh, you don't have to deal with any fogging that's going to obscure your vision while you're cutting the ligament. Uh, it also comes in an all disposable uh, kit. So much fewer uh, trays or instruments that your scrub tech has to uh, deal with. You can do several of these in a row and very quickly. And you can do also this procedure in any setting. You can do it in the operating room, obviously, under general anesthesia or MAC anesthesia. But you can also do this under strict local anesthesia. You can use lidocaine with epinephrine to numb up the whole area about 30 minutes prior to the procedure. And that works very well to do this under local anesthesia. And that's it. You can go ahead and close it with a couple of stitches or however closure you like, soft dressing, and get them moving right away.